This is a tutorial to develop an, a discrete event simulation using the event scheduling approach for the inventory system that we discussed in lecture. In this case, there's a warehouse that stocks products and they products, the products sell for some certain amount each. Um, customers arrive based on some inter-arrival period. They demand some number of products based on a separate random variable. And they can only purchase uh, the products that are actually in stock. Um, the interesting part about this problem is that the goal of the simulation is to determine the best order policy, where the order policy defines two variables. One is a cutoff value, where if the inventory falls below that cutoff value, little s, then the, an order is placed that tries to get back up to some target value, big S. So that order will be placed. It has some certain cost associated with how much, what it would cost to, per, to place that order, and there's a delay until that order is delivered. Um, meanwhile, there is also a holding cost that's incurred each day based on the current number of items in inventory. So when we're setting up this problem, we developed a representation of the variables in this format. We identified two key system state variables, the current number of products in inventory, and the current number of products that have been ordered and are waiting to be delivered. Based on these two system variables, we've also defined three simulation variables. There is the simulation clock, which keeps track of the current time, and an event list that tracks the arrival of the next customer, so that's one of the types of events that get scheduled, and also the time that the products that have been ordered get delivered, so the delivery event is the second event. Some of the key statistical counter variables that we're interested in recording were their total revenue that the business makes from, uh, from products that have been sold to customers, and also keeping track of the total cost of orders that have been placed and the cost of holding inventory um, over time. So to develop this uh, simulation model, I'm going to be using, again, an object-oriented representation to avoid the use of global variables across different functions. Um, so as a whole, I'm going to define a class uh, simulation, which is going to hold all of the relevant information for our example. Uh, I'm going to give it a couple of key, uh, key functions. First, an initializer, where we're going to initialize our variables. Uh, also going to give it a um, a function to advance time, give it a function to handle a customer event, handle a delivery event, and also look at some of the process generators that are relevant to this simulation model. So define a generate inter-arrival um, process generator and generate demand. So this is the number of products that a customer wants to purchase. All right, so the next step is to start filling in some of this template for how to use the simulation. Um, let's start with the process generators because they're um, relatively straightforward. The Problem definition states that the customers arrive with inter-arrival periods following an exponential distribution, and they demand products based on a uniform distribution between one and four. So let's import the NumPy package um, to use some of its random number generator capabilities. The inter-arrival period, we're going to return a value based on the NumPy random.exponential process generator. Uh, NumPy uses the scale parameter rather than a, a lambda parameter. So the argument into this exponential function is not 5, which is the inter-arrival time, but 1 over 5. There we go. Uh, similarly, for the demand process generator, we can use uh, numpy.random.randint. This will give us a random integer between a low and high value. The low value is 1, and the high value is 4. But the way that this function is defined is that you have to give 
just take a peek at, it, at its object information. Um, it generates, uh, it, the, the high value is exclusive. So if we want to actually have a upper bound of having four demands generated, we need to pass in an upper bound of five into this process generator. Okay, so those are those two key parameters. Um, let's assign some of, let's in, assign the initialization um, parameters that are relevant to this problem. Um, so let's first create the system state variables. So we'll initialize the inventory variable to zero. Um, let's actually initialize it to a non-zero value. Um, let's say that in this particular simulation, this is actually a key, a key part of the problem as well. We want to leave these um, little s and big S parameters as kind of optional um, parameters that we can pass into the problem rather than having um, hard-coded values straight away. So in the initialization for the simulation, I'm also going to pass in to these two parameters. So uh, little s is the order cutoff. Um, so this is the inventory level when orders are, are, are created. And then I'll also pass in order target, which is big S. This is what we try to fill our inventory to on the basis of this order. So these are being passed in as arguments here. Um, let's use the order target to initialize our initial inventory level. And what we'll actually want to do is also save these parameters for future use. So I'm going to just state, save them in self.orderCutoff and self.orderTarget. So this records the value of these parameters in these state variables so that we can access them at a later time. Okay, so we have our first system uh, state variable, the inventory level. It's been initialized to the target of uh, the target inventory level. Um, we'll also initialize the um, number ordered to zero. So we'll assume that at the beginning of the simulation, there is no products that are actually on order waiting to be delivered. All right, moving on to the simulation variables, we want to initialize the clock variable to zero. And we want to initialize these two events. So one was the time of the customer um, this we can initialize to um, by generating the next interarrival period. And we'll also want to set the time of the next delivery. And in this case, again, because at the start of the simulation there's no delivery on order, we'll assign it to be infinity. So we'll cast the string inf to a floating point number to schedule essentially delivery at an infinite time in the future to begin the simulation. Right, then we can look at some of the statistical counter variables. We want to keep track of the revenue. So we'll start this at zero. Um, the cost of the orders, we'll start that at zero. And the cost of holding, we'll start that at zero. All right. We could also um, save some of these other parameters um, in the simulation model if we wanted to save the uh, selling price or the purchasing cost or some of like the delay, uh, the delay du duration, holding cost. We could save those as extra variables in the simulation. And that's what I've done in the posted example. But just to keep things moving on a little bit quicker, I'll fill those in as needed in the other pieces of code. All right, so if we wanted to test our simulation so far, we can create a new simulation object. Uh, we do need now these two parameters to be passed in. So we need to determine what is our order cutoff. Let's say that we'll make a resupply order when we have when our inventory falls below 10. And we want to try to get up to 30 total inventory. So that will be our order target. If we run this script as it is, we can take a look at our simulation object. It is a simulation instance. It has a clock value. It has a revenue. It has a time of the next customer. It has an inventory. And these are some of the variables that we're going to be modifying in the successive functions. Um, let's also, just to keep things consistent, we'll seed the random number generator. So I'm going to say numpy.random.seed. 
and we'll just set it equal to zero so we get some consistent behavior across different simulations. All right, so the next step of, the, of developing the simulation is to fill in the event handlers and the advanced time function. So let's scroll down to some of the activity diagrams that we developed in lecture. So it looks like for advancing time, the first thing we want to do is to add up or to increment the holding cost based on how much inventory um, we have been holding since the last event time. We then want to update the clock variable and depending on whether it was a customer arrival event or a delivery event, handle those two separately. So let's figure out what the next time of the next event is. It's the minimum between the next uh, the customer arrival and the delivery times that have been scheduled. We want to update the holding cost, so self.cost holding. We want to add to it the current inventory level, self.inventory times two. So two is the holding cost per item per day. And then multiply it by the, the next event time minus the current clock time. Then we can update the current clock, self.clock equals t event. All right. And then based on if the um, if the time of the customer is less than or equal to, let's say that in this case, let's say that the delivery comes first. So if if the time of the delivery is less than or equal to the time of the customer arrival, then we will handle a delivery event. And otherwise, if the customer event is scheduled before the delivery, then we'll handle the customer arrival event. Okay, so this is starting to look pretty good. Um, we now just have to fill in these last two methods for how do we handle customer events and how do we handle delivery events. So we have these activity diagrams developed in lecture again. So the first thing in the customer event is we need to generate a demand. So demand is the result of this demand generator. Um, then we need to check to see if our inventory is uh, greater than or equal to the, our, the demand level. So if the inventory is, if, there, if we have enough inventory, which we can do it, if our inventory exceeds this demand, then we will um, handle it in one way. Otherwise, we'll handle this in another way following this branch in the activity diagram. So if we do indeed have enough inventory, we need to um, add our revenue, add to our current revenue 100 times the number of products that were demanded, um, and then subtract from our inventory those number of products, self.inventory minus equals demand. Just forgot myself here for calling the generate demand on this current simulation object. All right, so if if the inventory exceeds demands, add 100 times the number of demands to the revenue, subtract those demands from the inventory. Otherwise, we only can add to our revenue, we'll sell all of that, everything that we have left in inventory. So inventory could be zero, we might have nothing left in inventory, in which case we get no additional revenue. Um, but in, in the second case, we'll actually then sell out of anything that may be left and override our inventory level to zero. Okay, <clears throat> so we finished this first kind of this upper block of the activity diagram. And this last little piece checks to see if our updated inventory requires a new demand, uh, a new order to be uh, scheduled. So we'll check to see if our uh, inventory If our inventory is smaller than this um, this cutoff value, um, and we'll also also we also need to check to see that there's no um, there is no order currently on the books. So check if the inventory is smaller than the cutoff, and if the number of current orders is less than or equal to zero or equal to zero. So if this is the case, if if our inventory falls below this cutoff and we don't have an order yet, then we need to create a new 
order. We'll say that the number that we'll order is this cutoff, big S, minus our current inventory level. Um, and we also need to add up the cost of making this order level. Um, so we'll need to update the cost of orders to add in 50 times this number that were ordered. Uh, we need to schedule the next delivery time. So the time of the delivery is the current time, the clock, plus two. So it takes two days to get a delivery in this problem. And the last piece of this is, in either of these cases, the last piece of handling the customer event. Um, so whether we need to make a new delivery or whether we don't need a new delivery is to schedule the next customer. So we just need to update the time of the next customer to be the current clock time plus the generate inter-arrival call. So it was kind of a complex event um, so just again to walk through the steps, we generated a demand for the customer. If we have enough inventory to meet that demand, we add the revenue that we received from this order or from this customer. We subtract the amount of products that they took from inventory. If we don't have enough inventory to complete the full demand, we can maybe complete part of the demand where we get a partial revenue by selling out all the rest of our inventory and then set the inventory to zero. If the inventory after all of that has fallen below the cutoff and we haven't issued an order yet for more products, we then determine how many we need to order, um, which is the cut, which is the, sorry, this is not the order cutoff. This should be the order target, the target level of the order minus the current inventory level. Um, add the cost of this order, 50 times the number that were ordered and then schedule the delivery of this at two days in the future. And after that, we can schedule then the next customer arrival, which happens after a certain inter-arrival period. Right, the delivery event in contrast is very simple. Um, once the delivery is handled, uh, we need to add to our current inventory the number that were ordered. We need to reset the number that are on order to zero, and then schedule the next delivery to be at an infinite time in the future. All right, so let's give, let's give this simulation a shot. We can rerun the script, and I'll just do this through the command window to start. Um, so we can see that we have uh, 30 items in inventory, our next, oops, our next customer will arrive at day 0.15. We don't have a delivery scheduled yet, so the current time of the next delivery is infinity. When this customer does arrive, we can process or we can advance time. We can see that we, our clock has been updated to the arrival time of this customer. Our inventory has fallen to 28, so it appears that this customer has purchased two products. Our revenue has increased to 200 for selling those two products at $100 each. And our holding cost has gone up to 950 uh, for holding those 30 products for those first 0.15 days. We can start to automate these simulation executions over longer periods of time. So we can, uh, for example, run this um, for uh, two days. So we can, instead of using a while, or instead of using a for loop to iterate over a certain number of events, we can run this continuously until or can keep running it while the clock is less than or equal to two. And under those circumstances, we'll advance time and maybe just for fun, also print out 
the uh, inventory level and print out the revenue. Okay. So we can see over these first two days, we start with 28 in inventory and 200 in revenue. Dr drops to 24, 22, 19, 16, 15, 12, um, 9, 7, 6, 2, and then 0. So at some point, it looks like actually between this, uh, b between when it was 12 and 9, an order was placed. Let's actually just print out the um, clock in each of these as well, just to get a little bit more insight into what's happening. So just to restart the First clock value was at this 0.159. The inventory dropped to 28, and we had 200 in revenue. Um, it looks like the order would have been placed. Um, the inventory fell between b below the cutoff between these two events. So it looks like uh, the next delivery is probably scheduled for 3.44. We can actually take a look at the value of the simulation T delivery. Indeed, the next delivery is scheduled to arrive at time.